Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, May 24th, 529 a.m. Central Time. July corn futures down two and a quarter at 575 and a quarter. July soybeans down three and a quarter at 1319 and a quarter. July Chicago wheat down six at 616 and a quarter. July Kansas City wheat down eight and a quarter at 833 and a quarter. July spring wheat down four and a quarter at 816 and a half. Mackenzie, we've got some uh, biofuel stuff to start off with here this morning. We sure do. Boeing CEO believes that biofuels are too expensive to replace jet fuel. The company's chief, uh, David Calhoun, said we will create scale and get more economic. But no, I don't think we will ever achieve the price of jet A. There has been some concern within the private sector regarding the difficulties and expenses surrounding a shift to, sus to sustainable aviation fuel. According to last week's Argus data, sustainable aviation fuel traded at $6.83 a gallon, while jet fuel traded at $2.83 a gallon. Currently, sustainable aviation fuel accounts for less than 1% of global aviation fuel needs. Okay, this is a fantastic piece from the Financial Times. I'm going to run through some of this because there's a lot of interesting comments here. Uh, first off, to, to give you some background, um, we know we're going to lose some ethanol demand because of electric vehicles, right? And this was this is supposed to be the, the savior. This is the problem solver. We're going to lose uh, ethanol demand because we're switching to electric vehicles. And this is not something that's going to happen today or tomorrow, but in the years to come. Uh, the idea was... We're going to pick up that demand and maybe then some via sustainable aviation fuel. Um, here's a comment um, from one analyst. He said this. He's saying the quiet bit aloud. He must be British um, the way he talks. There are no cheap ways to do SAF. If there were, we would already be doing them. Um, former chief of British Airways said it is achievable, but anyone who says the costs of transitioning to net zero are going to be low or unnoticeable, I'm afraid is fooling themselves. Passengers will have to pay higher fees. We need to be honest with our customers. Airlines are not in a financial position to absorb that cost. So ultimately it will be have to be, it will have to be passed on to consumers. Um, the tax credits for this stuff, guys, this was um, included in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. There were uh, vast moves toward clean, clean energy subsidies but this is not going to be easy i mean the way that this article reads it's like yeah this is the direction that we're moving but this is not going to be a painless transition by any means because economically it just doesn't work and i'm not an expert on the tax credits or how they work but for the moment it appears as if maybe it's it's not enough right here and right now but we're pushing toward this and i think you'll i think you'll get there eventually in some way shape or form it just i think this article speaks to uh some of the difficulties that we may see in, in moving toward this uh, sort of transition for sure. So if you guys are not already subscribed to our premium content, you sure need to do so. Joe, tell me about the video you put out yesterday. What's the hardest thing to figure out ahead of USDA reports? It's always acreage. Acreage is like the one thing where USDA always comes in and throws you a curveball. Everybody gets the acreage numbers wrong in like every report. In this particular video, I discussed the crop progress reports and why um, figuring out what's actually been planted is impossible in real time. If you guys are interested in the premium stuff, you should sign up today. Go to standardgrain.com. This is a $50 per month subscription. This is content only. Nobody's going to try to sell you anything else. There's no other fee, uh, no other obligation. You can cancel it anytime. Um, I'll send you that video if you sign up this morning. I'll send you uh, Friday's video and uh, Monday's video regarding the funds and uh, what happens when they go short the corn market uh, during the month of May and into June. Uh, you can sign up on your phone with your credit card or, or on your computer. It takes about one minute. Uh, give it a shot this morning, guys. So forecasts for the central U.S. Corn Belt remain mostly dry. The seven-day government map offers no rainfall for Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, or Ohio. Only minimal rain is expected in Minnesota and South Dakota. The six to 10-day and eight to 14-day government maps call for above normal temperatures and below normal rainfall. This morning's GFS suggests that rains will return to Iowa around June 6th. So even this long-term map that's on my screen here this is the gfs out through june uh 8th 
it's like around the fifth or sixth that some of these rains uh, may come back into parts of Iowa and Minnesota. But look at Illinois and Indiana. I mean, all the way out through the first week of June, uh, you're still pretty dry. Same thing with Ohio, same thing with a lot of Missouri. And who knows if this longer term stuff is accurate. In my experience, the market tends to trade the stuff that's like six to 10 days out and this stuff that's like two weeks out, uh, maybe not so much. So I, I honestly think, maybe I'm crazy, I think part of the reason we've seen some upside in the corn market in particular is because of this forecast. I don't think it's too early or crazy to believe that because you know if you, sh if you start to shift toward a drier trend and, and maybe we're in the process of doing that and that trend continues, you know, that's friendly. That hurts your yield prospects. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. uh, here in the Plains, uh, Mackenzie, you can speak for everybody here. This rain that is uh, coming for Nebraska and South Dakota and Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas, very much welcome. Oh, for certain. Yeah. I, I mean, pasture conditions are improving with all these rains. Uh, things are looking good on our end. Okay. So this is this like a major flip flop in the in the weather uh, set up here that we're going to go, uh, we're going to shift wet in the plains and dry in the Corn Belt. I don't know. But that's kind of what it looks like this morning. We'll see what happens. So SRW wheat futures posted an upside reversal yesterday. The July 2023 contract traded at its lowest level in more than two years prior to a higher close. While yesterday's technical action was positive, a long-term downtrend remains intact. The contract trades uh, more than $5 per bushel removed from last year's high. Uh, golf clap for the uh, SRW wheat market. Uh, big reversal off of the lows, but we're $5 off of uh, the highs that we posted last year. Um, could this have been a bottom? Sure. Maybe it's exhausted. I don't know. We've talked about how U.S. wheat's overpriced. That doesn't mean you can't rally on the board for a little while. Um, the HRW mark market has been the one that's acted the best, and uh, rightfully so, but it went up and rejected some old highs uh, just last week. So overall, the wheat market's still in very bad shape. Uh, big time downtrends on the charts. There's 100 different downtrend lines you could draw on this SRW wheat chart. But uh, maybe some light at the end of the tunnel here, given that action yesterday. Um, from a, a technical standpoint, you'd really like to see some follow through buying uh, here today if you want to see this uh reversal pattern workout and just like any under any other indicator a reversal or key reversal it works about half the time corn production estimates from brazil are increasing well-followed private group AgroConsult pe pegged the country's second and larger corn crop at 102.4 million metric tons. The group had previously estimated the crop at 97.2 million metric tons. CONAB, which is Brazil's version of the USDA, most recently pegged the second corn crop at 96.1 million metric tons. The group estimates an 11% an increase in average yields on acreage similar to last year. Okay, so this is a big old corn crop they're talking about here. Uh, 1024, CONAB was at 96.1. If you take this 1024 and then pair it with uh, CONAB's estimate for the cor for the first corn crop, which was 29.4, that gives you a total Brazilian corn crop of 131.8, uh, which is uh, really, really big and above uh, most of the uh, other estimates that are out there. And in any way you slice it, it's a record. Um, the group said, AgroConsult said that they're still... 20 million metric tons at risk because they had late planting and you could run into a frost event or something along those lines, but they appear to be in awfully good shape. Uh, Brazil is able to offer corn at a discount to what the U S is able to offer. So uh, that's part of our, uh, part of the problem here in regard to corn exports, certainly. Ukraine says the Black Sea grain deal is not working as it should. The Ukrainian port of Pivdeni, one of the three ports included in the deal, has halted operations due to Russia not allowing ships to enter. According to a Ukrainian official, the port has not received any ships since May 2nd under the deal. Pivdeni is the largest port included in the agreement in terms of throughput, over 1.5 million tons of food are being stored in the port, awaiting export to 10 countries by 26 ships. Russia has denied slowing inspections. So this was out yesterday, and SRW Wheat Futures posted a bottom and rallied. Is this why 
I don't think so. I don't think anybody cares about this story. Um, I think we'll care about it again in uh, in 60 days when the deal's up for extension again. But uh, for the moment, there's there's a story about this every day, and somebody is always whining and moaning about something, whether it's Russia complaining about lack of sanction relief or Ukraine complaining that Russia's doing something that they don't like. There's a news story every day. Um, is, is this one any different than the other ones? I don't uh, really know, and I don't think the market is is overly interested in this. We still got to talk about it, though, because if this war does escalate in the wrong way and uh, you see Black Sea shipments disrupted again, especially from Russia, which I know people think is impossible. But if that were to happen, it would be uh, a tremendous uh, disruption to uh grain flows and, and wheat flows in particular on the export market. Little progress has been made in U.S. debt ceiling negotiations. Republicans seek, uh, seek spending cuts that Democrats believe are unreasonable. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said last week that June 1st is the hard deadline for a, de for a deal uh, that the U and the U.S. may be unable to pay some of its bills. Uh, financial markets may have start, may have started to react yesterday. The S&P 500 lost 1.1% and the Dow Jones lost 231 points or 0.7%. So we deal with this debt ceiling thing like every year. Um, there was one example where the markets really went crazy on this thing. In 2011, it was like seven or eight days before the, dead, the deadline. Um, the S&P lost 17% in two days. And uh, we're not to that point yet. This was in 2011. Uh, we are now, what, seven or eight trading days away from what Yellen says is, is the deadline. So if, if the market uh, gets concerned and, and the trade says, you know what, guys, get your, get your stuff together. Um, th this has to be sorted out. They'll take the market down. And, and I don't know if we're to that point yet. I don't know if yesterday was the start of it, but there is precedent for it. It happened in 2011. And this would absolutely, in my opinion, I think it would have an impact on the grain markets. I think it would impact every market on the planet. If you take the US stock market down 17% in two days, like you did in 2011 ahead of this deal, um, the, if the market forces the hand of the government, which it, it may need to if they don't get it together, uh, that's it's, it's bad for everything. So we hope that they get this deal sorted out and that they don't wait till the 11th hour to you know uh get this thing done saudi arabia's energy ministry has warned market speculators on tuesday the energy minister told speculators to watch out warning of more possible production cuts in april saudi arabia and other opec plus members announced production cuts of 1.6 million barrels per day by october the announcement boosted prices for a short while but worldwide economic concerns have since weighed those prices down analysts believe the bearish buildup of speculative speculative market positions increases the likelihood of further production cuts the International Energy Agency reported that the market's pessimism stands in stark contrast to, uh, to the tighter market balances expected in the second half of the year. OPEC Plus members are set to meet on June 4th to discuss the future of oil policy. So he's saying, look out above, uh, the market's going to rally because we're going to cut production. Uh, the crude oil market has not been to, been able to rally for a long time. This is a weekly chart on my screen. I mean, every time it, it gets up above 80 bucks, they sell it off. It's been range bound to lower. Crude has really struggled. It was a market that for a long time, uh, everybody was bullish the market and it did nothing but go lower. And now it's been more sideways, kind of lifeless, kind of stuck in this 70 to $80 range. We spent a little bit, bit of time in the 60s, but very, very unexciting. Hey guys, remember June grain options expire Friday. If you have uh, any positions there, make sure you take a look. Uh, cattle a little bit lower yesterday. Yeah, cattle had a down day on Tuesday, live cattle were down anywhere from 25 cents to $1 uh, to a buck two. Feeder cattle saw losses from 32 cents up to a buck 45, except for the May contract, contract, which gained 122. Cash cattle trade, of course, is still at a standstill this week. Choice box beef ended the day at $300.74. That was down 316. Select was also down. Uh, it was down 215. Ended the day at 281.28. Outside markets, guys, U.S. dollars a little bit higher. Stock market's getting beat up again. So again, maybe we're starting to see some reaction to this debt ceiling thing. The s and is down 16. Dow Jones down 140 ahead of the cash open. Bonds up a little bit. Gold's up four bucks. Crude oil's up $1.23 at 74.14 in the uh, July WTI. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you Thursday.